Hello guys and welcome back to the Teacher Made channel where everything is made by a teacher. My name is Shannon and I'm a licensed special education teacher. If you are new here, go ahead and click the like button. Also subscribe to this channel. Today we are going to talk about my favorite accommodations for dyslexic students. And you can also try using these accommodations at home as well. The first thing that you're going to do is you want to include large print. Large print meaning letters that are very large on a sheet of paper so these students can see the words because we all know that children who are dyslexic or adults who are dyslexic they have a learning disorder in reading they have a hard time seeing the words because it's all over the place i had a student who's dyslexic and he also was autistic so i made sure that i had large print with all the assignments that i gave him also, I made sure that the teacher had large print inside her classroom. Number two, the next thing that you want to do is you include extended time for these students because you don't want to make them feel like they're being rushed to complete an assignment because they are having a hard time with reading the material that you're already giving them. So think about a student who has an IEP and they're in the third grade, but they're reading about on a first grade level. First, you're telling them to hurry and complete this assignment. And secondly, like they can't even read this assignment, let alone do it because it's not on their academic level. So you want to make sure that you give them extended time, which I was advised them to do anyway. Always make sure you give students on their academic level, but also you want to make sure you expose them to the age appropriate level that they're already in. So make sure that you give them extended time and try to give them extended time at home as well. Don't rush them. Don't force them to hurry and complete something, okay? Number three is you want to try and use a amplifier. That way your voice is carried out throughout the classroom. Um, or also you want to try and do a tape recorder so they'll be able to re um, replay over and over what you just said in the classroom for an assignment and because of COVID and we are doing virtual, what has helped me for my student is that we record all of our lessons. That way it's easier for the student to go back and click on that lesson and hear my voice and see what they miss or also to repeat the directions for maybe they miss something throughout the classroom. So it's more of them just replaying everything that you just said in the classroom or if you are a parent, you just, you know, using a tape recorder so that they can practice at home. Number four is what you want to do is you want to break up the assignment. Or if you give them a task at home, you want to make sure you break it into smaller chunks. So that way they won't feel frustrated to try and complete everything all at once. And if you give them a lot of reading material, you want to make sure you put it down in clear, clear, concise instructions like simple instructions such as making a bowl of cereal so pour the milk inside the bowl like simple instructions like that nothing heavy um that's going to make them have a tantrum <laughs> um number five is you want to make sure you include a lot of highlighters that can be an accommodation on their iep highlighting all their work or using a variety of different colors to highlight their information on their reading guide or any material that they get inside the classroom. Also, you can use a highlighter at home as well when they're doing their homework or any assignment that you give them or task that you give them. Like I said, these are different accommodations. Some may work for some children. Um, they may need it or some may not need them at all. The sixth accommodation that is used for dyslexic children is you want to provide an outline for them so everything that's going on inside the classroom you want to make sure you include an outline of what's going on it can be like the outline of the whole entire schedule for today and that can be a picture schedule which is another accommodation visual schedule or also you can just have um words on it but make sure it's large print so that they'll know what's going on in the classroom and so they'll be able to keep up with everything that's going on. The next one, my favorite is dictate to scribe. And not a lot of people use this accommodation, but it is very effective. Um, I actually did dictate, dictate to scribe for one of my students like uh, years back because they couldn't write it out for them or they had troubles um, with their spelling because 
spelling goes along with um, dyslexia as well too, along with a bunch of other disabilities like this calculia. You can watch the video or you can read my blog post about the four Ds that no one ever wants to talk about. You can read that blog post because all of them go hand in hand with one another. Um, autism, ADHD, it's a lot, but we're here to help the student. And like I said, back to what I was saying, dictate, describe. So you're just writing down what the child says to you. They can have this accommodation when they take the integrated test or any test inside their classroom. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to try to include graph paper. And this will be good for when they're doing math. Because like I said, this Lexia kind of goes with this Calculia. So giving them graph paper to complete in their classroom will also help them and just you know, just make them a better student. And number nine, which is another common accommodation that we use, but not so often because they want to test the child's true ability in reading. I know it is oral administration. So if a child cannot just absolutely cannot absolutely read, you want to give them oral administration on their test. And that's when the teacher, they just they just read it out to the student. I have had oral admin on students who were not dyslexic. So, but like I said, we want to test, test the child's true um, ability in reading. So a lot of people don't like, a lot of schools, I should say, don't like to use that accommodation, but it is an available accommodation to you and your child. And thank you for watching this video. And like I said, these are the nine accommodations for dyslexic students. What may work for your child may not work for another child, but I'm hoping that you will use at least three or five on this list and see if it has improved your child's reading or helped them with school or e-learning or whatever you are doing this um, school year going into the fall. Bye, guys.